We finally found the perfect car in racing blue. You even got them to throw in the LED fog lights for free. Auto owners insures your car because some people never learn to parallel park. That's simple human sense. Keep going, more. No, no! Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Red Raider Coaches Show. My name is Brent Johnston along with Head Coach Mark Wilson. Coach, you doing okay today? Doing good, doing great. Yeah. It was a nice cool morning. Oh, put nice. Little, good weather. Put a little cook, uh, kick in your step. Yeah, that's right. You know, hunting weather is what it feels like. <laughs> exactly. uh, I don't hunt much anymore, but uh, I look forward to those, those cool fall mornings. Mm, and it uh, looks like we we're headed for some of those. I think it's going to warm up a little bit uh, during the day today, but uh, it definitely felt good this morning. That's right. Uh, again, welcome to this week's uh, show. Last week, uh, we, we actually recorded a show, but we didn't post it because we didn't want to confuse anybody with the new times and dates and, and all of the changes we had to make because of the weather days that we're, uh, we were forced to take uh, due to the potential uh, of Hurricane Ian. Um, so this week, I want to mention, I'll start off by mentioning the meals from the previous week, and we'll catch up to those this past week uh, that happened on Saturday. Um, but I definitely want to mention the ones from a couple weeks ago. It's always DLE and Sons. We thank them for their donation of the meat. Uh, Taylor Egg Farms, and you can uh, guess what they're donating. Uh, then Bacon County Hospital System was the major sponsor for, for last week's breakfast. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a really, might be the best meal of the day for those yeah, young men. Yeah. Uh, we're again reminding you, we're, we're busing them over to uh, the First Baptist Church there, uh, allowing the, some men and women of our community to come get up early and, and cook for these guys. and. Um, and that, that's always a cool thing. Pre-game meal was provided by Lee's Chapel. I want to thank that church and that community out there uh, for rallying around our uh, Red Raider football team and providing that meal. And then finally that post-game meal. Again, we've talked about win or lose, these guys need uh, some nourishment after what, they're, uh, uh, what they've done uh, the last couple hours. Uh, so, you know, Alma Pro Wash, and that, that's becoming another common name uh, that's been a sponsor this year for um, these post-game meals, and that's Alma Pro Wash. So we thank all those sponsors uh, for being a part of a greater nation and providing these meals. Coach, we're going to jump right into it. Um, you know, we did have some, I can't imagine, um, you know, the, the different the scheduling aspects of uh, the things we had to deal with. Administration, they started looking at the weather uh, the first of the week and just wa watching and waiting and other counties were making some earlier decisions um, for various reasons. Um, and then, you know, we, we finally uh, pulled the trigger on Wednesday and, and decided that uh, we were going to try to play football on Thursday evening. That's right. Yeah, that was a little different. <laughs> we, the, uh, what, what type of input did, did you well, you know, we coach in East Lawrence? How does that, how does that Yeah, we, we talked with them earlier in the week, you know, we're off the bat and, and uh, with uh, Coach Parker and Miss Williams and, and their AD and, and head football coach and, and talked about doing it, but everybody saw the weather coming in. And so we sort of decided on Thursday and then uh, then had that change on us a little bit. And then we didn't think we were going to be able to work it out to play. And then, then finally uh, got Saturday, uh, finally that they uh, agreed on the, the time. We couldn't do it later in Saturday evening. so. We could do it earlier, and they they couldn't do it early. But then we finally figured out at two o'clock on Saturday. So well, we're glad we got the game in for all parties. Um, and do, again, the logistics of that when you're navigating two teams that, and especially one that's traveling two two and a half hours away. Um, so you do have to be conscious of, of that. You know, just because you're the home team, you don't you can't make every decision right. and set it in stone. But uh, we did get that game in. It started at two p.m. Coach, I'll be the first to admit, and maybe. That first half was a little sluggish for well, it, it was. I'll be honest with you. Uh, uh, you know, a, a different schedule. Mm -hmm. uh, people don't realize it, but we wasn't in school, so we couldn't practice. So we, we right. practiced on Wednesday, and then couldn't practice Thursday and Friday. Now they could practice because they were they were in school. That's right. And a lot of people didn't realize that, but I thought our kids did a good job as well as you could do. You know, and it's just hard when you hadn't practiced for two days to come in and. And but uh, both teams are sort of sluggish. I, I mean, so. just a different kind of deal, you know. Different atmosphere, and, 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 and that's the first thing I think about. And, and again, it, it, you talk about, I hear collegiate coaches talking about certain schedules and 
going and playing in different time zones and 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 the, the acclimation to that uh, you know they get you get in such a routine exactly right. um, and we're all creatures of habit exactly um, you know from getting ready in the morning to whatever it might be uh, so when one little thing gets out of whack it, it can you know make some changes mentally uh, and I think that's probably what we saw um, it wasn't a lack of effort I don't think it was just again just the, the time of uh, the time of day and all the changes that, that was made but overall I felt like we we, we we, we dominated the game most of the game, we did. especially the second half. That third yeah. quarter, I thought we come out and did some good things. And um, so sort of the second quarter, we started getting some stuff that, that we could do, and, and finally started playing a little, a little better. And uh, you know, got up, and, and our biggest thing was, you know, getting up, but letting them come back. Right. And that, that was the big thing that uh, you know that we've tried to work on in practice. Uh, you got to play hard every play, you know. Yeah. And not let them get back into it and things like that. And I think that was the, the main thing. Right. Well, I think the news is out. Uh, <clears throat> you know, in the fourth quarter, we were up uh, like 28 to 14, mm -hmm. I believe. And, uh, and, and like you said, we, we, we allowed them to go back down the field that right. one time and, and score a touchdown. And something interesting happened. Uh, they were attempting the point after attempt, which is a free kick essentially. That's right. And uh, during that process, our defense stepped up and we blocked that kick. That's right. And the ball's fumbling around. And, and I've seen it over and over. You know, irregardless of what the rules is, kids are scrambling and, and jumping right. on the ball. That's, That's just true. a natural yeah. reaction. Mm -hmm. Well, the uh, East Lawrence jump, didn't jump on it. They picked it up and run it in. And the referees called for a, 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 a two-point conversion. That's but, right. But Coach, mm -hmm. tell us a rule on that. Well, the rule is on a, on a try, mm -hmm. an extra point, uh, once the thing is, uh, once the kick is blocked, it's a dead ball. So it should have the whistle. Actually, we thought we heard a whistle. Yeah. One of the officials said dead, it's dead, and, and we thought it was over with. And like you said, now on a field goal, you could actually, if it, it stayed by the neutral zone, they can pick it up and do that. You know, because right. because we have the we have the uh, really? ability to pick it up run it back. Uh, and, and run it back. So, uh, but on extra point, it's supposed to be dead, and, and that's what the rule says. So. Uh, you know, uh, I just to, had to move on. <laughs> had to move on, and yeah. it was tough. Yeah. You know, when when you're, you're you you keeping them from getting that one point, so now they're eight points down, and now they're six points down. Yeah, that's, a, that's a big difference in a ball game. You know, you, yeah. you feel like you got a little bit more uh, cushion. What you, what you do? Two points, but you know that if they score, they have to go. They have two. to go for two, and if they don't get it, you're going to win the ball game. Or if they do, you're going to be tied. That's right. So, that's, right. That's a big, big. Uh, that was with about nine minutes to go in the game, and you know our Raiders took the ball and uh, ran a few plays. They got the ball back and um, drove the ball back down again, uh, and we made a great defensive play near the goal line, about the five yard line. Got an interception. That's right. And you know, in, in our minds, man, we we sealed the deal. You know, right. it's it's twenty eight to twenty two. Um, even after the the mistake that the referees made. Um, and you know we're in the process of in the, I know we saw us go immediately into the victory formation and right. it's and it's tight quarters down there again yeah. we're about at the five yard line quarterback quarterback don't have a whole lot of room to step back and kneel down but he did it twice mm -hmm. and got us was about just inside the one yard line right. uh, and man the one of the strangest plays I think I've ever seen and 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 people has probably seen it we posted it online and I know we've we've <clears> sent it <throat> sent it to some different authorities uh, to be evaluated but. Um, it certainly appeared that our offensive line did not move. We did not snap the ball. Right. But somehow or another, they Yeah, down up. on the goal line, uh, you know, uh, we were back inside the one. So, uh, you know, we want to sit there a little bit longer and, and see if they jump. And, and, and they did. They did. <laughs> we didn't move. We didn't snap the ball. Uh, the official said that the ball moved. And I said, yeah, well, after they come over and hit our guy, that it would move. Uh, but yeah, it's just, uh, you know, one of those things. And, Judge McCall, uh, you know, it could have been one or two things. Uh, either it was a snap infraction on us because right. we didn't snap the ball all the way up, or either they were offside. So those are the should two have been things. A either way. Either way. It yeah. should have been either should've on been, us or them. Yeah. And it should have been a touchdown been, on that play. Exactly. At least on that exactly. play. Exactly. And then since uh, the previous play where they got the two, two points, points, and then they picked the extra point and went up on us 29-28. Uh, so. It was a gut punch. I was being honest yeah, with you. It was for all everybody. everybody. I mean, nobody. Everybody. I mean, the stands. You could. Uh, it yeah. was. It was. Uh, it was a, again a strange situation. Um, and I know you. And, and we all have to be careful how we how we speak about the officials. And because um, it's that's a very it is a difficult job mm -hmm. to, to do. 
Um, but there's, I guess there's certain plays that, man, you know, you, you rarely, we fuss at the refs and we, we even talk about certain plays that these guys may run in a game. You're like, oh, man, that was a difference in a game. He had just made that catch, but it really wasn't. Um, but in this case, <laughs> this, that, you know, these couple plays actually made the difference in the game. And that's disappointing when the boys can't, um, I guess that's where I was disappointed, when the boys can't finish it on the field uh, no and doubt. take care that's of business. Right. But, yeah. but let me ask you this, Coach. What, uh, what do you tell you boys, you know, not so much immediately? Well, you know, our, our kids did everything to win the ball game. Uh, I thought, you know, we, we played hard. We, we did the thing. We made mistakes. Uh, they made mistakes. Uh, it was one of those kind of games. But we did everything we did and left it out on the field. I'll be honest with you, I've never been in that situation before, so I didn't know <laughs> You know, in 34 years, I've never never seen that. So uh, it's, it's sort of hard, but when we finally got in, you know, uh, it was frustrating to everybody, and we, we probably didn't handle things the way we needed to a little bit. and, and, uh, and uh, But finally got, uh, you know, in there where we could talk about right, it and, right. and uh, reflect about it, and things going to happen like that in life. You ain't, gonna, you ain't going to know what why it happened or, or what happened and uh, uh, I know my mom and dad got cancer and I didn't know why they had it but that wasn't in my hand so you know uh, those, those are things in life that come along and it's hard to get over heck I got four hours of sleep all weekend you know <laughs> I think one hour on uh, Saturday night and two on Sunday so uh, you know uh, so those things but one thing is we've come out this week and, and put it behind us We've had the best week of practice we've had since I've been here. The attitude's been great. We've picked up our effort. Wow. Uh, we learned from our mistakes. And as long as you can do that, man, you know, yeah. uh, that's, that's growing. So. That's it. You know, it's a life lesson, like that's you just right. mentioned. And, and, and you know, I talk to my students about that kind of stuff all the time. Life isn't fair. It's not. It really is not fair. And, and the older these kids get, the more they're going to see that. And they're going to have to, you know, strap their boots on and get up the next day and, and get after it, whether it's at work, whether it's with your family. It's uh, for a, 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 a sport or whatever. Um, so I'm, I'm real, real proud to hear that, that that's what has happened this week. That, to me, that, that it, you know, them having a great practice or the, what you say maybe the best all week, and you saw their effort pick up and those types of things. So, coach, y'all must have said and done something to help energize and uh, it's just, just continuing to build the character of the team. Well, it's just uh, you know we felt bad about it. I mean, you know, and, and felt. Uh, our kids have a lot of character. They, uh, you know, they do. They have a lot of character, and, and it, it came out this week in the way they handled things. Yeah. And uh, I was proud of them for that. And, and uh, our coaches did a good job of coaching them during the week. And uh, you know, we're looking to play great uh, Friday night. That's awesome. I, and again, just last to, to touch on, that, I talked to my dad over the weekend. And I said, you know, you're dealing with 14, 15, 16, maybe 17 year old boys, and. And that, that's just a difficult situation to put, put them in and, and expect them to react exactly how you would want them to. Um, when uh, us as the adults in the stands were like going nuts, <laughs> you know, how do you expect the kids to uh, not be emotional about it? And that's okay. Um, but anyway, moving on. We're going to put that East Lawrence game behind there you us. Go. Um, you know, East Lawrence isn't going to get us in the playoffs. They're mm -hmm. not going to get us that uh, right. first, second, third, or fourth seed. You know, we got everything still ahead of us. Right. Our region right. schedule, which will start in a couple weeks. but. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna host this week. I'm gonna mention their name, Johnson County Trojans. Is that correct? I think so. Uh, Coach, I don't know if Bacon County has ever played Johnson. If we had, I, I didn't go back on the historical site, but I know it's been a long, 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 long time if we have. Um, but I do want to mention first, this is homecoming week. We postponed. That was the first decision that was made last week. Was we're postponing all homecoming festivities and uh, placing them this week. Uh, which you'll see me in my yellow shirt. Today was neon day. We, uh, each, each class had a different color, and I'm a representative of the freshman class. Um, so um, Monday was, uh, was wore your homecoming t-shirt and some jeans day. Um, Tuesday, I'm going to have to ask for some help. What, what was Tuesday, Vidi? Tuesday's dress up? Athletes, athletes. What was it? Athletes, yeah, athlete, like yeah, yeah. So. athletes and mathletes. Yeah, athletes, athletes and mathletes. And then yesterday was a Celebrity Day. Um, kids had a lot of fun with that. Um, hopefully, I have some pictures. If you come to, if it's when you come to the game Friday night, I want to get some pictures and put it on the big board so folks can see what's went on. And again, today was a neon day. Tomorrow is always on Friday is Crazy Red and White Day. We always look forward to that. Have a big pep rally. 
uh, get kids going, uh, get them excited about what's going on, um, and hopefully have, again, a big turnout tomorrow night. Uh, this afternoon, again, we're recording this uh, Thursday. This afternoon we'll be having the parade starting at the elementary school. and It'll end downtown. Um, yeah, got quite a few floats, uh, quite a few cars. The band will be playing. Um, our homecoming court obviously will be represented there. Uh, so we want to encourage you to come out uh, 5 p.m. on Thursday to be a part of that. Uh, and then ultimately it'll culminate, uh, again we have a pep rally on Friday, and it'll culminate at the homecoming game, which will, um, the, the court, the selection of the king and queen will start at 7 p.m., so get there a little early. Uh, I'd suggest about 6.30 to get you a decent seat, no later. Uh, so you can be front and center uh, to watch uh, those festivities. That takes usually about 10 or 15 minutes. And then we're going to kick off with Johnson County. First, let me let you comment. You know, you've been coaching for 34 years. Right? Yeah. How, how do you feel? Most coaches, boy, they hate homecoming because of all the distraction. But what, what do you think? I always tell the kids, look, homecoming's for everybody else. We got a ball game to play. So. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, it fires the guys up. And, and uh, you know, we have a good crowd usually. And, and uh, it's good to have people come back and, yeah. and uh, celebrate Bacon County, Bacon County football. So we we love. It. Well, what we're most looking forward is some good weather. Oh right? yeah, that'd be great. Uh, <laughs> I, I think I, as of right now, in that uh, yeah. looking at it now, we're gonna have some decent weather. It might actually be a little little warm, warmer than maybe it has been the last couple of days. But uh, but I don't think we got any rain before yeah, So I think great. our band will finally be able to play on the field uh, for our home crowd and. And those types of things. So we're definitely looking for some, some good weather. All right, so Johnson County Trails. Yep, yep. Uh, Coach, what little bit of research I've done, it looks like they're 5 and 0. They are. Um, pretty good start for them. They're in that, that single A division, Division 1, is that right. correct? That, that, the smaller group right. of Division 1. They're right in the top five. They are. Um, and then, from my understanding, uh, I, I get that Georgia High School uh, football daily, daily email yeah, every, right. every, every day, and I'm usually the first of the week, they, they're shooting up stats. and. Well, I see this was running back for Johnson County. He's he's racked up some. They numbers. got a couple good running backs. I think they had two last year. Then both of them are back, a full back and their uh, little wing back. Uh, both of them rushed for over a thousand yards last year. So they got a lot back and uh, good team. I think they're ranked third or fourth in the state. And, and uh, you know we're excited about playing them and having them come in and and getting getting to play. So what kind of offense they they, they run a wing T sort of offense. Uh, it's a little different. They run the option out of it a little bit more and. And they, they like to run the sweep a lot and get those guys out in the thing. Uh, defense, they run a 4-4 on defense and uh, fly around, play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. Uh, They're going to try to uh, put everybody in the box and, yeah. and cover you up. So they got some good athletes. And uh, and like I said, they're 5-0, and oh, so uh, they've been doing something right. Well, I've been interested, you know, all season long, you know, we've been more consistent, I think, on the defensive side of the ball. And that's that's what I look forward to seeing as our defense match up against uh, this team because you know it sounds like they got a little bit of speed and they, especially if they're going to try to no move doubt. Out the perimeter uh, whether sweeps or, or whatever but uh but i'm you know our defense is pretty quick too yeah and hopefully we'll uh you know come out and, and play great like i said we we work effort and, and uh, fundamentals this week and and have uh practice this great so I, I look for us to be around the football and, and have a bad attitude when we get there Coach, one last comment. Uh, how are we on uh, injuries? And yeah, we're, we're banged up a little bit. Uh, got uh, alignments banged up with growing. Uh, Trey, Trey Beyond didn't play the uh, whole second half last week, running back. Uh, Trey Don Richard, he, got, he had a growing, and he practiced a little bit this week. You know, he was hobbled a little bit, but I think he's feeling a little bit better. Yesterday, he practiced pretty well, so, you know, uh, trying to limit his reps a little sure. bit, but. Uh, you know, DeAnthony Green, Mookie came in and did a good job. JoJo, uh, Slade, uh, you know, we've got several running backs, so, uh, you know, we feel feel like we can get after it. And the Lions been doing a good job blocking, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to open up some holes and, and, and have some time to throw the ball. Uh, I think we're going to have to hit some shots, you know. They're going to play man. We're going to see if we can hit a few. Yeah. yeah. Well, we definitely got some guys on the outside that can uh, get down the field. Um, so hopefully we can connect score a few points and, that's right. and win one for the Gipper this yeah, weekend. Right. It's always good to win on homecoming. Again, no hopefully hopefully have a big crowd. I want to encourage you to come out and represent Raider Nation. Um, we'll be broadcasting live, but I always encourage you home and away. I want you, to, want you there in person so that these guys can hear your voice, see your face uh, as you're supporting Raider Nation. Um, but again, come out come out early. Uh, again, festivities start at 7 p.m. for the homecoming court. 
and then the game will follow at 7.30 against Johnson County Trojans. Again, this might be history. A little bit of uh, more history with that. That's the, uh, the school Herschel Walker graduated That's from. Right. And in my mind, he's the greatest collegiate player of all time. Um, and if he had went to the NFL, he'd probably end up being one of the top yeah, no NFL backs, or if he stayed in the NFL longer, started and stayed there longer. Uh, but he's definitely one. If, I, I think he's the greatest uh, college football player uh, ever uh, that graduated from Johnson County, little Wrightsville, Georgia. So uh, a little fun fact there. So come out and support Raider Nation, Coach. Thank you for being here with thank us. Thank you. Appreciate that. And we'll look forward to seeing you at the game. Yes, sir.